Hi everyone, just so you know, whoo, sorry, thank you. Um, we're just gonna start a few seconds late, so keep talking and thank you for your patience. So good. Also, as a side note, if you get too hot, and that's okay, the funeral home is open and it's cooler and everything will be on TV so you can watch it from there. So don't get too hot and stay comfortable, okay?
Okay, welcome everyone. There are a few extra seats. There's one by this guy. Raise your hand. Oh yeah, there's another one in the second row and then there's two right up front. Oh, good. Good. Um, perfect. Well, welcome. My name is Chris Yankoff. I'm the funeral director here at the funeral home. Thank you all so much for coming on behalf of Kathy's family. I know this is sudden and so sad and thank you for being here to support Neil and his family so I've really grown to like you over the week not that I didn't like you at the beginning but get to know you I guess this is why he's the minister and not me so <laughs> good well we have people online watching from who knows where and that's really special and there is seating inside if anybody gets too hot so if you do get too hot you can go inside with the bathrooms and things too so if you have a cell phone or anything that could disrupt our service, if you could just silence them, that would be really awesome too. And I think that Pastor Tim Manzer is gonna start our services today. So thank you all very, very much for being here. After this, you are invited to the Elks, which I think will be a, a very special time too. So just as a reminder, thank you, Pastor Tim. The most powerful part of this service is you all here loving each other, caring for each other, and delighting each other. I'd like to begin with a prayer. I'd like to pray Psalm 23. Dear Lord, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. You make us to lie down in green pastures. You lead us beside the still waters. You restore our souls. You lead us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though Kathy walk through the valley of the shadow of death, she fears no evil because you are with her. Your rod and your staff, they comfort her. You prepare a table before her in the presence of her enemies. You restore her soul. You lead her. Um, you restore her soul. Surely goodness and mercy has followed her all the days of her life, and she gets to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We're going to have a song right now. The song is It All Began With a Beer. And that's usually a title to most of my Deer Camp stories, but I'm looking forward to it.
Yeshua, I'd like to read from a few paragraphs from the obituary. Because it tells the story that you know far better than me of Kathy's life. Kathy was employed by Sarah Lee for 41 years, retiring in 2018. She enjoyed gardening, knitting, knitting, crocheting, reading, and crafts. She loved to entertain her large extended family, and I'm so glad you're all here for the holidays and enjoy the time that she was able to spend with Neil away from Northern Michigan winters. Everyone has a role in a family. Kathy's role was being a mother, and she began this role as a, as a child and never stopped making sure everyone was taken care of. She will be remembered as a loving, caring woman who always thought of others before herself. She will be deeply missed. You know, I, I thought of a couple passages that kind of go along with that. I just want to read it. The natural one is 1 Corinthians 13. Love is very patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never haughty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. If you love someone, you'll be loyal to him no matter what the cost. You will always believe in him, always expect the best of him, and always stand your ground in defending him. There are three things that remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. I thought that passage summed up Kathy is what I heard. Another one from Philippians 2 says, don't be selfish, don't live to make a good impression on others, be humble. Thinking of others is better than yourself. Don't be just about your own affairs, but be interested in others too and in what you are doing. Your attitude should be that, both shown by Jesus Christ. I, uh, I grew up in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, a little town called Dollar Bay. And uh, really close to our house was Portage Lake, but we didn't live on Portage Lake. We didn't have access to Portage Lake. And uh, there was five kids in my family, and all we dreamed about was getting onto the lake. And uh, it, there was an older couple that lived across the street called the Stouts that lived right on Portage Lake. From their house, you could see about a mile across. You could see Michigan Technological University. And we would put our kayaks out there because they let us. They would uh, let us uh, put a, a little rowboat out there and. Us kids would get in the rowboat, and one of us would have to paddle, and the rest of us would put like daredevils behind it and try to catch pike as they spun behind, kind of the self-propelled trolling system. And we would get out there in the winter time on the ice and put a hole in the ice and go ice fishing, and oh, we loved it. But something had happened to Grandma Stout long before I knew it as a little kid. And sometimes when I would walk across their property, Grandpa Stout would stop me and say, come on in, Tim. <laughs> Tell us what you're doing. And I would sit down, and obviously, Grandpa Stout had dressed her, taken care of her, fed her, done everything for her. And he said, tell me what you're up to. And I had spent three summers as a, a mountain guide, and I was always traveling all over the United States, going all over. And I would sometimes be coming back from these trips and I'd say, well, when we were in Wyoming or Colorado or Idaho, wherever we were at, New Hampshire, this is what was going on. And it would tell the story. And Grandpa Stout would say, hey, Betty, do you hear that? Hey, Betty. I always walked away from that setting and said this, someday when I'm older, I want to love somebody like that. And that's the kind of mama you had. It's the kind of wife you had. She loved with everything and all that she was. Left nothing behind, and you were her everything. A note that Melissa gave me, which she had posted a few times, which I, I read it. I have never read this before. Well, I'm going to go home and read it to my wife and, uh, because it's beautiful. Let me read this to you. This something. That, uh, that Kathy loved and meant a lot to her. So I want you to hear it as her words, not mine. Barely the day started, 
and it's already six in the evening. Barely arrived on Monday, and it's already Friday. And the month is almost over, and the year is almost over. And already 40, 50, or 60 years of our lives have passed. And we realize that we have lost our parents, friends, and we realize it's too late to go back. So let's try, despite everything, to enjoy the remaining time. Let's keep looking for activities like we like. Let's put some color in our gray. Let's smile at the time in life that put balm in our hearts. And despite everything, we must continue to enjoy with serenity this time we have left. Let's try, let's try to eliminate the afters. I'm doing it after. I'll say after. I'll think about it after. We leave everything for later like after is ours. Because when we don't understand is that, afterwards the coffee gets cold. Afterwards priorities change. Afterwards the charm is broken. Afterwards, health passes. Afterwards, the kids grow up. Afterwards, parents get old. Afterwards, promises are forgotten. Afterwards, the day becomes the night. Afterwards, life ends. And then it's often too late. So, let's leave nothing for later. Because still waiting See you later, we'll lose the best moments and the best experiences, the best family. The day is today, the moment is now. That was powerful. I've been a pastor for a long time in this town and uh, 2002, I was on my way back from a wedding rehearsal. Uh, I was doing a wedding for the plumbers who own Moomer's ice cream and uh, I was hoping to get a lifetime supply of it. And, <laughs> and uh, um, I was on my motorcycle after the wedding rehearsal, coming back to my house, when a girl blew through a stop sign at 65 miles an hour, and I T-boned her car, putting me in the hospital. I was airlifted. I was full code, blue, my heart had stopped, I wasn't breathing, I had many broken bones. I spent eight months in a hospital bed, had to learn to walk again, had to learn to recover in so many different ways, but that's not what the story's about. <laughs> Somebody asked me, as a pastor, what was the spiritual lesson you learned from being crushed? I said, this is the lesson, and it so reminded me of this note. Do what you love now. If you need to tell somebody you're sorry, do it now. If you need to tell somebody you love them, do it now. Enjoy the moment because we don't know about the afters. That's powerful. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, so much love and support and we so appreciate it. Um, it means so much. <laughs> um, you know, if you knew my mom, she had a nickname for you. She had a nickname for everybody that was close to her. Um, I remember this one day when I was younger, my friend Jane and I were driving in their minivan with my mom and just happened that Neil passed us and and um, going the other way. And Jane's like, hey, there goes Gerns. And I'm like, what? And she's like, is that his name? And I said, no. <laughs> she just has his nickname because she has nicknames for everyone. So um, I just thought Jane was here today and that reminded me of her. So our mom and <sighs> thank you everyone for coming and for being here and supporting us and for loving my mom. It means so much. Um, we're having cold beer at the Alks Club afterwards. You're all invited, OK? <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to close with the word of prayer.
my uh, predecessors of old pastors of the past, at a moment like this, when they were around the graveside, would put their hand on the coffin or, or the urn, and, and then they'd pray a prayer to win something like this, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, and then we commit the soul and the spirit of our sister to the presence of God. And I'd like to pray something similar to that. Dear Lord, this life is beautiful. It's meant to be enjoyed. It's meant for family. It's meant for hope. It's meant for life. Dear Lord, it's meant to express love. And that love was originally a gift from you who came and expressed it through your love for us. Dear Lord, Kathy lived that life, and now we give her to the arms of God. In your mighty name, amen. Very good. Thank you, Pastor Tim. This will conclude our services here at the summit at the funeral home and you are invited to the Elks. If you need directions, let us know and we can guide you in that direction. And thank you for loving and supporting this family. They're awesome. So thank you all very, very much.